Hey there, it's Clarence from Asian Tech Guy here again. Well, in today's time, it's still very hard to find a GPU at decent prices. So if you're really hard up for money, or you just don't want to splash so much on a ridiculously priced GPU these days, this build right here is definitely the one for you. This is all possible because of this guy. It's too small to see right here, but I can see in the B row. Basically, this guy is the Ryzen 5, or rather Ryzen 3, 2200G, 4 core, 4 threaded chip, has an integrated GPU, we call this an APU with Radeon Vega 8 graphics. It's pretty good for all day tasks and some like gaming. So, this, this chip right here, if, if you bundle this with dual channel RAM, this can definitely tie you through, through these hard times, and they can find the decently priced GPU. And of course, you can upgrade this to something more reasonable, like a Ryzen 5 3600. I got this guy for just 65 bucks. It's really still. You can get it for this price. It regularly goes for 100 bucks off Carousel Marketplace. And when we're going to put this in this motherboard, this is the Asus Prime B350 Plus. It's an ATX motherboard. I got this guy for 70 bucks. With this, although it's a B350 platform, this particular model, upgraded BIOS, you can still support up to a a Ryzen 3000 series, so you can possibly get up to a Ryzen 5 3600 or 3950 if you so wish for RAM. We're definitely gonna go dual channel. We have this Corsair Vengeance LED uh, that's not RGB on this guy, just glows in white. And this is at 2666 megahertz. It's budget, but I think it fits the bill. It, it pairs out with the 2200G real well. I think for best price performance, you can probably go for 3200 but that will sell it back quite a bit. For this kit, I got it at a steal as well. Of course, I got this just for 50 bucks. It's 2666 at CL16. For the CPU, I'm pairing it with the AMD Rev Stealth RGB CPU cooler. Uh, this CPU cooler works, but some screws are missing. It's held down by zip ties. Uh, you can't see right here. I'm gonna move it closer to camera. Come on, focus. Yep, it's held on by this zip tie right here. And another one right here. <laughs> but it still works. So this is free, given to me by the seller of the 2200G. So you can't complain too much about that. We're definitely gonna go with SSD storage, of course. But sadly, there's no M.2 NVMe drive support on the motherboard. And I don't have any M.2 SATA lying around, so I'm going to go with a SSD SATA drive, uh, which is plenty fine. This is the Hyodragi Hyo, it's such a mouthful. It says Huan Xiang in Chinese, which is dream, but the English name is Hyoradi. H E O R I A D Y. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, it's a 480 gigabyte kit. I think that's plenty fine. Uh, usually I would go for 250 gig, but nowadays the price is minimal. Usually uh, 250 gig goes for about 40 bucks. This kit is about 70 bucks, so it's kind of worth the money to go for this. This allows you to put more games on the drive. As compared to having a 250 gig, you might have to resort to putting a lot of stuff on a hard disk drive, and that will be uh, taking longer time to access. And especially games, you will you will suffer like longer wait times. So this guy I got it for 70 bucks of Taobao Marketplace. Like for power supply, the, we don't really have a discrete graphics card. We have a 4, 450 watt power supply right here. This is not really power hungry. Uh, so you don't need that high voltage power supply. But this should support up to a 1660 Super plenty fine. Okay. You might want to upgrade it uh, and get something close to a 650 watt so you can support up to 3070 if you will. But for now, this will suffice. I got this for steel, of course, as well. It only went for 20 bucks. I tested it and, and it checks out just fine. Lastly, for the case right here, All right, this is the Techware Verge. Uh, I think this is kind of an old case, but it's relatively well maintained. It has a front like, glass panel at the bottom. There's some vents for some airflow, but the side, uh, that's all shit. And of course, he has the whole uh, side uh, tempered glass panel on the left as well to display your components. 
then the seller actually included seven ARGB fans into this guy. But it told me that in certain lighting modes, the, the lights will flicker. So after cleaning this up and testing it, uh, we'll see whether we need to replace them or we'll sell them as spoiled. Well, this case was cheap, 15 bucks. I couldn't complain too much. Even if I were to change out the fans, it's still plenty worth it in my books. I just need to step on probably three in front and one fan behind, and I'm good to go. With everything considered, this build is under 290 bucks. We'll call it 300 bucks. And if you make some changes, if you use a like smaller SSD and 250 gig, it can possibly reduce the price down to 250 bucks. But for now, I say that's enough talking. As you can see, the case is pretty dusty. So is this CPU cooler. So go ahead and give it a good dusting and probably wipe down with some wet tissue and uh, perhaps some cotton buds. And that's all we need to clean. The rest are relatively clean or new components. Don't require any cleaning. In fact, without further ado, here goes. So this is the floor situation after the quick blow blow. <laughs> now we're gonna get some good old paper towels, give everything a good wipe down, and we should be good to go to start putting everything together. As I was cleaning this, I'm sure you could tell that right there, there's a few missing PCIe brackets. Uh, well, it's a cheap case, it's snap off, so I can't complain too much. But of course, if I really want to fix it, I can buy some replacement PCIe brackets or rather PCIe covers. They are real cheap, uh, but I'm going to flip this for cheap, uh, so I won't bother too much about that. So I left the stuff to dry overnight. And now it's time to place everything together and see if it works, of course. I'm sure it does because I already pre-tested everything. Enough said. Let's run right here to the building. First off, before I forget to do this, we're going to put in this pesky I.O. show. I always find a hassle and a pain to put this in. I think like, oh, motherboard should have this pre-installed, rather integrated into the motherboard. Right here, the satisfied click, we should be good to go now for CPU installation. We unhook that retention lever, plong that chip right in, push down on the lever, and we're done. Give it a wiggle, yeah, it's tight. Now I put on the towel piece, just a piece size amount will do. Yeah, that should work. That's a bit much, but whatever. This stuff is cheap, so I'm fine with that. So this cooler, the Ref Prism, uses like a clamp style design, which you just have to retain your, you know, CPU mounting base, and this hooks right there. It it will come with all AM4 motherboards. So we just hook one side on. Sorry, that can't see this side. Right, once that is on, just need to put it into place. Just lift this lever all the way to the other side. It should lock into place. Yeah, and we'll go. Of course, we have to plug in that CPU fan header. Alright, time to install these bad boys. We're gonna install the RAM sticks into the second and fourth slot. 
So we're gonna push it until we hear a click sound on both sides. Alright, that's satisfying. Second one. This thing is pretty much done. We just gotta plong it into the case. Uh, install that PSU. And we'll see if this thing boots or not. First, we line up that motherboard with the IO shoe and the standoffs on the motherboard. I mean, the chassis itself. Right, right there. We start, we start screwing everything in. And there you have it. It's not rocket science there. I'll just skip right through this. Up next, we have the power supply. We want to make sure to, to install it fan facing down so we can intake from the bottom of the case. And we secure the PSU in. Just like that. At this point, what we have left is basically to plug in all those pesky 24 pin ATX, 8 pin CPU, all your, all your front panel audio USB connections and the fan heaters. I'm getting a bit tired of it. I'm sure you guys are. I'm going to skip through that part and we'll start testing the system. Uh, I mean, we won't benchmark it yet, but I want to make sure that the fans work or doesn't work as what the seller intended. And if need be, either we have to remove some fans or support a fence, we'll see. A few moments later. PC is now plugged into power. So let's just confirm whether we have post. Awesome. That's a good sign. Yeah, I think we have that post alright. 2200G. Run at 3500 megahertz and 16 gigs of RAM. All detected. Right, as for the RGB situation, basically what I realized is that all of the front fans all work perfectly fine. But the back one right there, there's some issue and it's flickering. So I guess I'll disconnect the RGB stuff from there and just have it spin. Yeah, let it be a pin fan. And this guy right here, I guess the guy lost the cable, so the CPU code is not addressable right now. Plus those LEDs at the top, let me show you guys. Right here. Yeah, these LEDs are fixed RGB LED effects, but that's fine. I mean, those are free bling, so we definitely leave it right there. Not gonna matter with it. Alright. I plug out the RGB header. Oh. Rather, I change a different port on the fan controller. So the RGB wouldn't work. And I think it looks much better. Not on is better than flickering. And it's honestly an ISO if it really constantly flickers all the way. So that's great. So I realized I missed out one more thing. Critical component, our SSD. I took out that hard drive bracket right here. I'm supposed to put it right here and uh, screw it in through this mounting hose. It should be real easy. just go in this for and we're good to go right, this is not m.2 ssd so be sure to block in your sada power and our sada data cable right there we pop this back into the hard drive enclosure right here just like that right with that out of the way look at this back the mess behind me i'm gonna take care of this right now and thereafter, we're going to compare single versus dual channel RAM on this 2200G and see how it fares in some simple games that you can possibly play on this kind of this level of CPU while waiting for a GPU, of course. That's definitely not my best work, but it's good enough. 
I mean, there's quite a lot of cables coming through. In total, there's like seven fans. And well, back of the case, don't get bothered too much. I don't want to spend too much time on it. So now I'm going to go ahead to bang everything together. And yeah, as always, we're going to be using that secret technique. Forms down, lean into it, push. And we're done. Just screw this in. Easy peasy. Slip on that top magnetic dust cover. Lastly, we just slap on that magnetic front. I mean the template gas panel. What the fuck was I talking about? <laughs> Alright. Screw in with confidence. That's what the virtual would say. <laughs> That's an old job anyway, guys. Like the first title we're testing out is Fortnite. We're doing this in 1080p, medium presets. On those channel RAM, we're getting an average of 60 FPS, which is decent in my books. And when we swap out single channel mode, we're getting 40 frames per second. Now, enough said, this PC runs Fortnite at 1080p pretty well. I mean, you're not getting that high frame rate, but you're getting something really playable. The next title, CSGO. This has been out. The original version was out 20 years ago but still going strong today. So we tested this on 1080p at mostly high settings. With dual channel RAM, we're getting an average of 70 FPS. And we support the single channel. Basically, we dip our performance by 50%, we're getting 35 FPS. For dual channel RAM, the 1% low is at 31 FPS. And the 0.1% low at 25, which is decent. And this, of course, comes again when we support the single channel RAM. I think this PC runs very well for CSGO, so if you're into eSports titles like this, you'll not be disappointed, especially if you have a tight budget. The last game that we could sensibly run on this PC would be Dota 2. It's a mobile title that's still plenty you know, relevant in today's age. So we're doing this as well on 1080p, or high settings with all options on. With dual channel RAM, we're getting 51 FPS. I mean, this is not an FPS game, so... Uh, 51 FPS is definitely very playable. And when we swap out to single channel, and we're getting 30 FPS right there for dual channel, and the 1% low is at 30, and 0.1% low at 22 FPS. And this dips as well uh, with the single channel RAM. Hey guys, so all in all, seeing as the numbers goes, this guy under 200 bucks is really bang for a buck, especially if you're on a shoestring budget and just camping out. For a gym GPU that's not within reach these days, I could get lucky in the new it shuffle down the line, but this is a good base for you to upgrade. And with the B350 platform, you can still go up to the second gen, maybe 2600X, I mean 2600, or even 2700, and you can pair it with 3060, and we should be good to go there. So, one thing for sure that we've learned never chip up on the RAM just for 40 or 50 bucks more, you can get double the performance. Because from numbers, you can see that we're getting almost a 30 to 50% performance dip, which is insane. You who know one that. I think that's it for this video. So guys, from Singapore, Asia, and the rest of the world, if you like what you've been seeing, be sure to look out for the next one. Until then, this is Clarence from Asian Tech Guy, signing off.